Bayonetta 3 has finally been announced, and while we have no more a specific release date than 2022 at the moment, we've got more than enough time to get all kinds of hyped for what the third game has in store. In order to do that, we here at Blue Shell thought making a video on all the crucial Bayonetta info would be a great place to start, from plot points to key characters and that all-important lore that you might have forgotten about. The first game is 12 years old to be fair, we're not judging you. This is everything you need to know before you play Bayonetta 3, but before we get to the events of the first game, a little backstory. In the beginning, the Trinity of Realities was split into three realms, Light, Darkness and Chaos. It was Chaos that most needed a ruler, the one they called Azir, the Overseer. Aesir pitied the humans for their lack of free will, so the power he wielded was split into two halves, the right eye of light, gifted to the Lumen Sages, and the left eye of darkness, gifted to the Umbra Witches. By dividing the power of Aesir's eyes, humans gained free will and the power of choice. Guardians of the light and the dark, the Umbra Witches and Lumen Sages were naturally opposed to one another, and a pact was made for them never to cross paths, for the intersection of light and dark would surely bring destruction. Though even forces as seemingly opposite as they could not contain love's reach. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop talking like I'm a wannabe Shakespearean actor now. But in a Romeo and Juliet style turn of fate, Rosa, an Umbra Witch, and Boulder, a Lumen Sage, fell in love and bore a child, Bayonetta. If you're familiar with the Bayonetta story, you'll know I'm missing out a little bit of information here, but for the purpose of storytelling, I'm gonna wait to reveal that bit just as the game does. Rosa and Boulder's forbidden love sparked a war between the witches and the sages, with Bayonetta's mother imprisoned and her father exiled. During this time of war, Bayonetta is raised by the Umbra witches and forms a strong friendship with the witch Jean, as they grow up together in the 20 or so years the war rages on. Eventually, the Umbra Witches vanquish every Lumen Sage on the Earth and win the war, but their time for celebration is cut short as the angels that the Lumen Sages worshipped come after them. This leads the Witches to two conclusions. One, there is only one known Lumen Sage left, because he's technically no longer a Lumen Sage, Boulder, meaning he must possess the right eye of light, and two, he must be behind this attack so he can get the left eye of darkness and summon Jubileus, the creator, and grant him the power of the gods. To do all that, he's going to have to find Bayonetta, as she's the one with the left eye of darkness. In the chaos that ensues, Rosa is killed, leaving Bayonetta heartbroken and unable to fight. Jean, realizing that Balder cannot be allowed access to the left eye, seals Bayonetta under a lake for 500 years. 500 years later, Antonia Redgrave, a journalist, stumbles upon the site Bayonetta was sealed and witnesses her awakening. Angels immediately rain down and fight Bayonetta, killing Antonio in the process, and Antonio's son, Luca, witnesses this whole thing, and as he's a human incapable of seeing angels, he thinks it's Bayonetta that killed his father. As for Bayonetta, with no memories of her past but this strange pull to find the right eye of light, she sets off and our motive for the first game is realised. So let's get into it. The first game opens at a funeral with Bayonetta and a portly Italian-American man called Enzo. Bayonetta is dressed in nun's attire, a ploy for attracting angels to her. Sure enough, they come down and Bayonetta kicks their collective asses. It's revealed that Bayonetta was with Enzo, who is a black market information broker, to gather intel on the location of the right Eye of Light. Enzo says that the Eye's last known location was in the European town of Vigrid, before the two are ambushed by a mysterious woman with similar weapons and abilities to Bayonetta. She seems somewhat familiar, but flees before Bayo can ask any questions. Realising she's gonna have her work cut out, she teams up with Rodin, who serves as Bayonetta's weapons dealer during the game. Now equipped to deal with the inevitable fighting she'll find in Vigrid, she heads onward. There, a series of chance encounters help Bayonetta piece together her long-lost past. She's constantly pursued by angels and defeats the cardinal virtues, each of which hint at her connection to the clan wars of old. She meets the same mysterious woman again, who turns out to be Jeanne, and also meets Cereza, a young girl that Bayonetta is instinctively drawn to care for as if she were her own daughter. Eventually, Jean's stalking and teasing Bayonetta gets the best of her, as Bayo defeats her in a fight. In her humiliation, Jean reveals all about Bayonetta's past and sacrifices herself 
to save Bayonetta from an incoming missile strike. Which is nice, but like, why didn't Jean just tell her that from the start? I mean, they used to be friends, why have you got to drip feed us all this information after fights? Not saying you deserved that missile strike, Jean, but you know, kind of your own fault. Bayonetta reaches the top of the Ithavol Tower to confront the person behind her journey, the last of the Lumen Sages and her own father, Boulder. And boy, has he got quite a lot to say. First of all, Cereza runs from Bayonetta's side straight to Boulder and calls him Dad. Boulder reveals that Cereza is actually Bayonetta's past self, whom he brought forward in time to reawaken Bayonetta's memories of the past. Which seems like a decent thing to do, except he also reveals that he did this because the two eyes are not artifacts, they are people. Boulder is the right eye of light, Bayonetta is the left eye of darkness. If either wants to attain both, they'll have to fight for it, which is exactly what happens. If the player is good enough, Bayonetta will triumph over Boulder, shooting him in the head with the lipstick that once belonged to her mother. Using the portal in Boulder's office, Bayonetta returns Cereza to the past she belongs to. Again, a pretty wholesome gesture, but absolutely the wrong one. As soon as Cereza departs, Boulder is resurrected, seemingly unscathed from the battle. Returning Cereza to the past, but with the memories she's gained in the present, created an alternate timeline. In this version of the Clan Wars, Cereza had the inner strength to overcome seeing her mother murdered and, along with Jean, fought back against the angels. This newfound power awakened her left eye, meaning the eye residing in present-day Bayonetta has also awakened. Boulder's resurrection awakens the right eye, and now the both of them transcend to the heavens to reawaken Jubileus, just as Boulder intended. So it's not looking good for Bayo. But remember when I roasted Jean for insisting on fighting her instead of telling her it straight? Well, turns out she was under the mind control of Boulder the whole time, but her near-death experience and Boulder's resurrection broke his mind control over her. Realizing what's about to happen, Jean intercepts Bayonetta en route to Jubileus, breaking her free and sending Boulder flying into Jubileus, who absorbs him. And so, the scene is set for the final showdown. At this point, Bayonetta is pissed and ready to give it everything she's got. Not only does she defeat Jubileus, she summons the infernal demon Queen Sheba to blast the being into the sun. Yeah, it sounds like overkill, but it is a god, so you gotta make sure. Jubileus' destruction sends Bayonetta and Jean plummeting back down to Earth, killing them both. Yeah, obviously not, but the game does end with the side characters attending Bayonetta's apparent funeral. The nun holding proceedings turns out to be Bayonetta, and along with Jean, they deliver another sacred angel slaughtering. And that, my friends, is Bayonetta 1. Bayonetta 2 really delivered as a sequel, with more complex combat and several quality of life improvements over the original. Mostly though, it doubles down on that time travel stuff hard, so brace yourselves, we're going in deep. The story picks up pretty soon after the original, but with enough time passed for Bayonetta to get a nice new haircut. Bayo is out Christmas shopping when Jean shows up to tell her that the balance between Paradiso, which is basically heaven, and Inferno, which is basically hell, feel off as a result of the events of the last game. Before we can get any more info on that though, angels come out of nowhere to try and ruin their day, which is kind of becoming a theme at this point. Bayonetta proceeds to do what she do, but on summoning her demon Gamora for the sweet finishing move, loses control. Gamora starts freaking out and goes to attack Bayo, forcing Jean to jump in and save her. As a result, Jean's soul is separated from her body and dragged to the inferno. Bayonetta, now left with Jean's lifeless body, is pretty made up about the whole thing and goes to Rodin to figure out what to do. He explains that if Bayo can get to hell before the time on this conveniently available watch runs out, Jean can be revived in the human world again. Bayo finds out that the sacred mountain Fimbulventer holds a portal to the inferno and sets off to Noatun, the town at the base of the mountain. Like Vigrid in the first game, most of Bayonetta 2 is set in this small town Noatun, where she battles angels and tries to find out how to access the portal within Fimbulventer. While exploring, Bayo runs into this kid called Loki, who's also attempting to access the portal. Of course, Loki knows how to get there, so the two strike a deal that if Loki leads the way, Bayo will protect him. Which turns out to be a good deal for Loki, because on reaching the gates of Inferno, a masked Lumen Sage shows up to attack both of them. Alongside him, this kind of spirit-looking thing called Lopta is there. 
Now, we'll get on to Lopter in good time, but for now, the important thing is that he shows Bayonetta a glimpse into the past, over 500 years ago at the end of the Clan War. In this apparition, Bayonetta sees Boulder, her father, trying to save Rosa, not leading the attacks on the Umbra Witches as they all once thought. Of course, we know that Boulder couldn't save Rosa, but her true killer is revealed, some guy that looks a lot like Loki. Suddenly, the Lumen Sage strikes out at Loki, but not before the kid manages to open the gates of hell and slip away. He tells Bayonetta to escape with him and, confused but still determined to save Jean, she complies. Travelling to the very depths of Inferno, Bayo encounters the demoness Alarun, who has captured Jean's soul. Bayonetta beats the demoness so bad that she turns her into a new weapon and connects Jean's soul with the watch to resurrect her. While this is going on, the Lumen Sage has also entered the Inferno Realm, content on defeating Loki. Bayo intervenes to save Loki, even though she kinda just saw him kill her mum 500 years ago, but whatever, she's still figuring this stuff out. And she fights the Lumen Sage, his mask breaks off, and we see this young, pristine looking dude who is of course, Boulder. And then, Loki sends out this blue shockwave that takes all of them back in time to the clan wars. I know, I know, a lot of stuff just happened. Now back where it all began, Bayonetta sees her mother for the first time in 500 years. Or maybe a thousand, because she's gone there and back again. Anyway, it's been a minute, and now they get to fight side by side against the onslaught of angels to the point in time of Lopter's vision. She sees Loki, only realises that it's not actually Loki, it's Lopter. I know, I know, it's kind of wild, but stick with me here. Bayonetta battles Lopter, but he causes an explosion, managing to escape while Bayo plummets into the valley below. When Bayo comes to, Boulder is by her side and the two of them rush to find Lopter. Only, they're too late. Time has repeated itself and Lopter has killed Rosa once again. Bayo and Boulder, now knowing who was responsible for the death of Rosa, open a portal to go back to present day Earth to stop Lopter's plan to take control of the eyes of the world. So now forward in time we go, and Bayo and Boulder find Lopta, who is back to his weird North Star looking ass, and he's captured Loki. And before we get any further, I think we all need to take a breath and understand who the hell Loki and Lopta are. Remember Aesir, the god of chaos, who split his power into two halves to create the eyes of the world. Well, this act also divided Aesir's soul, bringing Lopta and Loki into existence. Like the eyes, one was created from light and one from dark. A being of pure darkness, Lopter sought to become Aesir once again and take the eyes of the world for himself. So with all that in mind, Lopter absorbs Loki's power and takes the right eye from Boulder. Bayonetta flies into action to try and stop Lopter, but he's too powerful. He defeats her and takes her left eye and transforms into Aesir, so now things are looking a whole lot worse. Even in the face of certain doom, Bayonetta isn't going to back down. Plus, Aesir has one key flaw in his plan. He didn't deal with Loki. As Aesir was reborn, so too was Loki, and as part of the God of Chaos, Loki has the power to delete anything in existence. He chooses to delete the eyes of the world. This vanquishes Aesir and turns Lopta back into his original form. Meanwhile, Bayonetta and Boulder summon a fusion of Queen Sheba and Jubileus that kicks Lopta into the ocean where Jean is lying in wait with Gamora, the rogue demon that she's now tamed. Yeah, I don't know how it works exactly, but it makes for a super cool finishing move. The battle is not over yet though, as Lopta's soul tries to escape to the spirit realm to be reborn. Unable to destroy the spirit and desperate to stop its escape, Boulder decides to absorb Lopta, locking the spirit within his physical form. Of course, he just absorbed the true embodiment of evil, and as he gets taken back into his time, we realise that this is the version of Boulder we fought in the first game. Damn, that kind of makes you want to play the first Bayonetta again, right? I told you we were getting into time loop territory. Bayonetta 2 ends back with Bayo on her shopping spree, now accompanied by Jean, both looking bougie as hell. But because this is Bayonetta we're talking about, of course, angels show up to ruin their party, and of course, that only ends one way. You'd think these angels would have learned by now that it's not a smart move to mess with Umbra Witches, but hey, I'm not complaining, it makes for an awesome prologue. Whew, we made it. That's the Bayonetta timeline, or multiple timelines, recapped and retold up to this point in this now multiverse. There's clearly a lot of directions they could take this in Bayonetta 3, which is super exciting. 
We're going to be talking theories, hopes, expectations, and everything else in the run-up to Bayonetta 3, so make sure to subscribe to Blue Shell if you haven't already. We also do, like, everything you could ever want to know about Nintendo stuff, so please check us out. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Please drop a like if you enjoy these story recap kind of videos. That would mean a lot. Until next time, you've been watching Blue Shell, and we'll see you on the next one.